The CREA is a student cultural centre and rehearsal rooms and we're about to go inside and check out what in players are up to today. So hello, I'm here at the CREA in Amsterdam and I'm talking to Derek Scott Mitchell about what he's up to. Uh, in uh, He's rehearsing at the moment two plays or a sketch in a play by Harold Pinto. We're going to talk a bit more about what you're doing in a minute. But um, first of all, can you tell me who or what are in players? Um, the in players are the oldest English language amateur theatre group in Amsterdam. Uh, and they've been around for over 30 years, I think. Um, and they've, you know, sort of existed in a few different incarnations. At one point in their history, they did stuff in the attic space of the Schauber in Amsterdam. Uh, and now they do sort of smaller stuff in theaters around the city. But it's all English language? All English language, yeah. But uh, members hail from a lot of different countries, some non-native English speaking, yeah. And what are you going to be doing at the Free Fringe? We're going to be doing two uh, plays by Harold Pinter, Precisely and Mountain Language. Okay. Um, well, you've got to understand that quite a lot of the people that watch our show are really thick. So can you explain <laughs> who is Harold Pinter? Um, Harold Pinter is an English playwright, um, very influential, um, late 70s through the 1980s. Um, and. Okay. Uh, Mountain Language and Precisely were some of his last uh, prominent plays. Um, lesser sort of in his canon, I th lesser known I think in his canon, but they're really phenomenal and extremely dark, darker than I think what a lot of Pinter fans are, you know, are used to. And what are they to. about? Um, they're about, I think, sort of the idea of, you know, oppression and oppressive regimes and how that impacts people, but also how you know, objectivity can be really skewed, sort of, um, depending on how, you know, those regimes are treated in media or treated through storytelling or, you know, historical documentation. He talked in his speech in the Nobel Prize about a tapestry of lies. And these plays, they, well, they were first performed, both of them, I think, in 1988. Mm -hmm. So they came out of Thatcher's Britain, which mm -hmm. is a pretty dark place. Has, has their relevance endured and now that do they have new relevances now do you find as you're working on them? Yeah I think so. Um, Polly, my co-director, saw these at the Royal Court Theatre where they premiered in 1988 <clears throat> and they really stuck with her and that's why she chose them. Um, I think that if I had read just read the plays because the, there's such an economy of language and they're so sparsely written I don't know that I would have chosen them just on an initial reading, but you know, through the rehearsal process um, and working with everybody, they've been, you know, phenomenally sort of um, relevant, you know, uh, in terms of current political issues around the world. Um, yeah, it's been very interesting how how timely and sort of pertinent they still are. Yeah, maybe because they're not specific. Yeah that you can read things into, especially the, obviously the Pinterest silences, there's yeah. quite a lot happening in those silences, so maybe that's how they endure yeah. and remain relevant. Although Pinter probably would like them to not be relevant anymore. Because they are, <laughs> I mean, if they became irrelevant, then the world would have changed and then yeah. it wouldn't be. Well, a lot of people, ch when, when, especially when Mountain Language was written, people challenged it and said that he was applying um, you know, he was drawing from very specific sort of socio-political activity um, in the late 80s, um, but he contested that and said that he wasn't, that it w that he was trying to um, make a, you know, broader, more general commentary, I think. Well, the issues of freedom of speech is pretty much ongoing. Yeah. Yeah. And um, people would also associate then Pinter, not necessarily with political theatre, but with absurdism. Mm -hmm. And... Um, Absurdism, people think of um, funny, 
Mm-hmm. They think funny when they think absurdism usually. Um, is there humor in, did you find, do you find any humor in these plays? Yeah, there's absolutely humor. Um, but I think that uh, Pinter was a master of using humor, um, you know, to really, really precise effect. And uh, the humor here is not, a, it's not dark humor per se, but it's um, chilling because it really sort of manipulates the audience's sentiments over the course of a really short play. You know, in the beginning, the laughs are sort of lighthearted and uh, voluntary, and at the end, they're, you know, they, they're a comment sort of in and of themselves. Mm. Yeah. Okay, well, thanks very much. And you can catch these Pinter Double Bill at the Free Fringe Festival Amsterdam. Check the website for details. Free Fringe Festival Amsterdam.com. Thanks very much, Derek. Thank you. Good.